it made me think uh, a great deal about what a good literary adaptation was. Mm. Um, that film was a load of rubbish for well, I'm really glad to have had the opportunity to see that. And one of the things that I came across when I was writing this book was a quotation from Virginia Woolf when she saw an, an early version of Anna Karenina and she mm. said, and I can't remember what it, was, what it was, but she said something along the lines of, she was very dismissive early on, she said, you know, sort of, a first stolen, a few pearls, do not make Anna Karenina. Mm. But then I thought afterwards, ah, but you know, she's kind of missing it because it's the way that that stole is worn and the mm. way that the pearls, are, you, you can start, you could, you know, with one shot, yeah. say so much yes, that it might right. take you pages and pages to do. Do you have a, a favourite adaptation that you're determined to get into the programme um, somehow or other? I, there are all sorts of adaptations that I love for various reasons. I mean, I must say that finding the excuse to show uh, Renoir's La Betty Men would be, we're mm -hmm. still at that early programming stage, I would love to do, because I think it's a wonderful convergence of uh, politics and Freud and a fantastic Zola story. Yeah. In there. So I think that you know, just at that point in 1938, it's all coming together beautifully, and this is the birth of film noir, but it doesn't know it yet. Mm. <laughs> um, so it, the, the combination of, of realism and uh, just the, sort of everything that is emblematic about that story at that time, and of course it's the story taken out of its original time yeah. as well, but it works, it still really works. I love it when people talk about films afterwards. I think I actually do think that because it's such, it should be a communal experience, watching mm. a film that actually some kind of discussion, I mean, or bit informal, or even if it's just in the pub afterwards, yes. it does seem to me to be part of the process mm. of cinema, part of the whole thing. That's, the, you know, it was not intended as a solitary activity on your phone, although there may be a place for a kind of cinema there as mm. well. Um, and so if you can get a discussion with the writers, well, especially when there are books where people feel they have some kind of ownership on because they've already read them. Yeah. That is just like a 3D book club, isn't it? Yes, that's right. And uh, you know, I think that that's why it's important that the festival continues to show not just current releases, although there's obviously a good argument for, for showing recent stuff. But uh, as you say, we're so used to seeing uh, films at home on DVD now, that that communality and the, the discussion process that is around it uh, is getting rarer and rarer and I think it's... What's nice about the festival is that for those four or five or six days in Bridport it has such uh, a buzz around it and it becomes the kind of focal point of the town and you have the sense that that discussion is is going on all the time, all around you. And in fact, frequently I would I would leave the screenings and come back to my hotel and sit in the bar and talk, meet with whoever I was meant to be introducing next on stage. And the conversations on the tables you would hear around you were, oh, that film was a load of rubbish, or wow, I'm really glad to have had the opportunity to see that on the big screen and this sort of thing. So, you know, I think the, uh, the festival does become a very living thing in the, in the days when it's taking place. Christmas Eve, the world is lost at sea, and that leads you and me to common decency, to keep the flame burning.